When you have deep clarity in your purpose, you'll never run out of stories to share, perfect fit clients to serve, and aligned partnerships to build. So if you're looking for deeper clarity on your own thought leadership brand, then download the first chapter of my audio course for free using the link in the show notes. Back in April, I led a small group of change makers through batching six months worth of impactful LinkedIn content. And one of my clients started sharing that content while we were still working together in that container, in that group sprint. And if you know me well, you know that I'm a little bit of a like creepy mama bear. Like that's the best way I can describe it. So I would be looking along at her content, at her live posts, as she would share her perspective, as she would share the stories that we had shaped like together in that container. And I remember thinking like, this is so great. And I wish that she was getting more something, like more likes, more comments, more reach. And this is funny because, not funny, haha, like, but just, it's interesting because I've really been able to de-hook from tying my own content's value with how well it's received, like, on a surface level. You know what I mean? But I apparently still need to work on it on behalf of my clients. And I think that it's just because I'm just proud and protective of them, especially because I get to see on the back end how hard they work, like both from an internal perspective and external. They're sharing pieces of their soul. They're moving and inspiring their audience. They're showing up and providing value. And so, you know, so that happened. And when the sprint was done after four weeks, I read everyone's follow-up surveys because, you know, we do follow-up surveys. We want to gauge how we're doing and, and improve. And it turns out that this client had already received her next international speaking gig. She signed two clients of her own, and she had had plenty of attention and some conversation from the larger, more B2B type clients that she works with on a one-to-one basis. And this was just from her handful of posts and consistent activity on LinkedIn, from showing up as a go-to voice on LinkedIn. And so She killed it, right? Even though her posts, like from an outsider's perspective, were certainly not going viral. And this is how this works. Like this is the way, right? And I just want to ask you, have you ever judged your own capacity and value based on vanity metrics? Or maybe have you deleted a post altogether because it didn't get any visible traction? And if yes, you are in great company. And yet an impactful coach, consultant, or service provider, like I would argue that resonance is more important for us than even reaches. Quality is more important than quantity. And it's easy to say that. And it's another thing to begin to unlearn that deep entrenched inclination towards more, right? Towards always scaling, producing bigger results, having access to the most eyeballs, being the loudest, like voice, I guess, in the room, even though it's, you know, it's just words on a page, but you know what I mean? And so none of that is actually necessary. And honestly, it's not actually even helpful. And, you know, as we center resonance as the goal, in addition to, or even instead of reach, it creates this shift in us, like this internal shift. It creates self-assurance, right? Versus clinging to the whims of an algorithm. It creates deep enoughness versus fear and nervousness about things we can't control. It releases the expectation to be the best, the biggest, the most perfect, with instead being more in touch with ourselves and emotionally in tune with our people, because what we're putting out there actually has meaning. And so if you thought the world was noisy now, like just wait until AI is like really fully integrated. There's about to be a lot more content with less soul. And that's okay because you know what? We can all become influential go-to guides for the people in our world for whom it makes all the difference because they are facing a very specific expression of a problem, which has a direct line to our own lived experience. So in this podcast episode, I'm talking about measuring the magic or tracking resonance instead of reach when it comes to our thought leadership and our visibility efforts. So I'm going to share what makes content resonate with your audience and share some clues on how you can find the signals of resonance, both on LinkedIn and in your email marketing. So keep on listening. 
Hey, I'm Tanya Bhattacharya, and you are listening to the Campfire Circle podcast. We are all about breaking down the boardroom table as the ultimate space of leadership, and instead replacing it with a campfire, because that's where we share our stories. That's where we build warm community, and that is where there's always room. I'm building an impactful business in public through thought leadership, and I'm taking you behind the scenes all along the way. So if you want to stand out as you stand up for your mission, you are in the right place. Okay, resonance. So first of all, I love that word. It's just a beautiful word. But let's define it because like thought leadership, it runs the risk of being a little bit intangible or like hard to define or grasp. But actually, it's a very exact physics term, like it's a science term. So resonance happens when a vibrating object causes another object to start vibrating at a higher amplitude. So for us as coaches, consultants, service providers, as small business owners, maybe as nonprofit leaders, working on our visibility and influence is about showing up in a certain way that energetically inspires at least one other person to show up at that same level or frequency or amplitude. So you know your message is resonating when people tell you, I feel so seen and heard, or wow, we are really on the same wavelength, or your posts really make me think differently or make me feel something, or I encourage my friends to sign up for your stuff because I always come back to your way of sharing or you're reflecting so much of what I have been thinking about and didn't know how to put into words, things like that. And maybe you have some examples of things that people have shared with you. And so what this shows us is that passion is contagious. And so I never want to hear anyone apologize for being too much or too passionate ever again, because all that is is energy that can be harnessed into action and change through thought leadership. And so it's easy to see and feel resonance in person, like at a, at a community gathering or an event. Like we can see our people, we can feel them, we can touch them, like we can see their faces light up. But how do we know if we're resonating when we are talking to people online and we can't actually see their body language or necessarily even hear their thoughts? So that's a good question. And that's what this podcast is all about. Like you resonate by doing the things that we do at the campfire. You show up in community, you invite people in. And most importantly, you share your stories, like your heart led stories and your vision, right? And stories are key here because stories create meaning. You've probably heard that a thousand times, but it's just stories are the shortcut to resonance. Like it is our stories that attract other people to us because they help other people see themselves reflected back. They help other people buy into your shared vision. They help people get on the same page with you with a shared sense of purpose and direction. Like they break the thinking and the illusion that we are all separate people having isolated lives or we are all so different from each other. When in reality, we're all having a very interdependent experience. Like, do you remember going on tours of maybe it was a college or maybe it was a camp that you wanted to attend? Think about who it was that gave the tour. It wasn't the dean of the college. It wasn't like the executive director of the camp or like the leader of the camp. It was probably a freshman or like a kid who was one year older than you who was showing you around and sharing their own experience and sharing the stories of like what that spot was like. And they're really the perfect person to do that because they're relatable. Relatability creates resonance. And so speak to the person that you were when you were living through the problem that you now solve. Stories resonate too, because we're actually wired to empathize through story. Like we are psychologically created for it. So because before we had email sequences, before we had LinkedIn posts, before we had podcasts, like any of the stuff that we have today, stories have always been how we've passed on information from one person to another, one generation to another. And so I have found that as long as we have clarity in our brand and the community that we want to serve, it's usually not the case that we are asking for too much or that somebody didn't actually have the time to get involved or that our services cost too much. It's instead that we haven't told the right story enough times or in enough ways. Those stories that share the why and the value and the outcome 
of what you're providing. Because the outcome of storytelling is trust and resonance. That is literally what comes of it, right? So I titled this episode, Measure the Magic, mostly because I love alliteration, but I guess that means I should talk a little bit about measurement or tracking, or at least getting a bit of a signal of how our work resonates with our audience. So I want to talk about LinkedIn first. And what I love about LinkedIn compared to other social media platforms is it's really about quality. It is, it is centered around quality. You don't have to post a ton of stuff. It's not a quantity game because your content has a longer shelf life on the feed. And we know that only 3% or less of active LinkedIn users post content. And so that means we've got a lot of LinkedIn lurkers. So back in episode 29, I interviewed Mariah Cause about her champagne client concept. And I'll also link that in the show notes. But pretty much, she has said that she's realized there are so many perfect fit clients and collaborators just waiting and lurking in the wings. She calls it lurking in luxury because our right fit people are not necessarily commenting. They're not engaging. They're not the loudest. They're not liking your stuff, but they are just silently waiting to be spoken to, to resonate with something, to feel something deeply, which is exactly what happened in the example I shared earlier with my client. She was sharing stories that resonated. And so her people didn't necessarily feel the need to be all over her comment section. They simply reached out and said, I don't know what they said. I don't, I didn't ask, but they reached out to like work with her. Right. And so that is because she built trust. That is because the work of thought leadership is building trust. And yet that work is invisible. So it's a little tricky, right? Because sometimes if we're not getting as much engagement as we'd like, and it's making us feel some type of way, we are making it mean something. We are telling ourselves a story that is not helpful. And so how can you tell yourself a new story, right? And one thing I know for sure is that your people, your right fit folks are responding, but they're doing it in invisible or behind the scenes ways. Like they'll save your post. They'll forward it to a friend in a message. They'll ring the bell on your profile so they can stay in the loop and be notified of your posts. They'll share it with their spouse or their business besties and say, they'll put it in a Slack channel. They'll share it with their peer mastermind. And those things, at least as of right now, in July, 2023, you can't actually see those things or track those things. And that's okay. There are things you can see. And some of those things would be people visiting your profile, maybe a couple of times, right? Maybe they're visiting every couple of days. And so that means something, right? Or maybe when you share your freebie, which is just like a juicy value-packed free resource, when you share that in a post so that you encourage people to download it, you realize that people who have never engaged with you are starting to download it and get on your email list. And oftentimes they are the people that you are lit up about serving. They are the ones that you had in mind when you started your work. Or when you finally venture out of the house into some kind of gathering, people will come up to you to have conversations about the things that you've been sharing on LinkedIn. They'll repeat back what you've been sharing. And it will be like weird and surprising because you didn't realize that they were so like, they had been vibrating along with you, but it just goes to show that they've been building trust and resonating with what you've been putting out there because of the ways you've been showing up. And people are a whole world unto themselves. And so when someone resonates with what you're putting out there, that resonation, I don't know if, I don't know if that's a word, that vibration, I guess, that, that energy doesn't stop with them. Like they pass that vibration on to more people. Maybe that's in the form of referring people to you. Maybe that's just like forwarding a post or an email newsletter. Maybe that's telling their people about your concepts and your key brand messages, the things that you are publishing your perspective about. And because LinkedIn is full of movers, shakers, and power brokers, the people who can help you make shift happen, like just that in and of itself can create a huge ripple effect that we don't see, but it's happening. There's so much happening in the world that we can't see. And that doesn't mean that it's not like vitally important and amazing and magical. So we get to lean into a little bit of just knowing that magic is real here. So So that's LinkedIn. So how does resonance show up in our email list? So I've been thinking about email a lot more as a complement and a next step to the community building work we do on LinkedIn, especially because emails are intimate. They're personalized. 
You can see what people, like where people join, when they join, what they're clicking on, what they're interested in, how many times they open an email. You can see a lot more information. And I want to just interrupt myself actually, because as we get more deep into email, I want to give you some exciting news. I'm joining forces with my dear friend, Jess Campbell, who is so smart and practiced at helping both nonprofits and social impact consultants raise revenue and make things happen through their email lists. And so she and I are doing a free live workshop on July 19th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, all about growing our email list from LinkedIn. And because you know me, it's not about growth for growth's sake. We want to grow our reach with the people who resonate with our brand and our business. So I'll drop that link to register in the show notes. Okay, so before I rudely interrupted myself, I was talking about resonance inside of emails. So just like on LinkedIn, how it's not about the number of followers we have, on email, we don't really need to care about the number of subscribers we have. It's like, you can look at it, but it's not the most important thing. In fact, I go through and regularly clean out anybody who hasn't opened an email in the last quarter from my list because it actually improves deliverability. If you don't wanna be on the list, I bless and release you. And I think it's important to note that if my goal was to build a media company or secure big sponsorships, this could be different. Like, but at the end of the day, I am a consultant who is building a visible expertise-based business, not a content creator who happens to like maybe have a course. And I think we have to decide what our emphasis is on and know that our goals might change over time. But again, for most of us who are listening to this, it's more about resonating with fewer of the right people versus reaching as many eyeballs and ear holes as possible. So instead, I want to get messages like, I don't actually want to get these messages because it means something's wrong. Like it means the tech isn't working. I kind of want to get messages like, what happened? I didn't get your weekly Firestarter newsletter. Did I miss it? What happened? Did you not send it? Like, where is it? Because that means I've created something of value that people are looking forward to, right? It's about value. It's not about volume. And so I track open rates over time. I track click-through rates. And when I say track, like I just, I look at them. I use Flowdesk. That's my email service provider. And they recently, like over the last couple of months, came out with this awesome dashboard for analytics. And my favorite report is performance by subscriber. You can filter it by open rate or filter it by click-through rate. And it will give you an, like a really great snapshot of the people who are most resonating with your emails and sticking around over time, right? You can see who has clicked on 100% of your emails or opened them at least. You can see the people who have clicked the most And that gives me information about the people that I want to spend time nurturing and being in community with. It gives you clues about who you should reach out to and invite into unique and personalized opportunities and nurture them into whoever they are meant to be in your world. Because sometimes we fall into this trap, especially when we're launching something of just being like, okay, did someone convert into a client or not? But it's not binary like that. When we are focused on quantity, we sometimes accidentally dehumanize people. There's actually a whole range of flavors and experiences and relationship that people can have with you. And so maybe your launch drove someone forward in a way that allows them to be ready for something new or maybe be ready next time. It's like a dance. And I know that we can feel disappointed if we didn't get as many of something as we had hoped, but maybe that number that we had in mind wasn't actually the real goal. Like, what if you could track something else that measured the richness and the deepness of relationship? And at the end of the day, I think it all comes back to those messages that you get, those DMs, those emails, those things that hopefully are tracking in your high five file, which if you don't know what that is, you got to know what that is. I'm going to drop it in the show notes. You got to have your own high five file. And it's great to have UTM codes and use methods to track where people are coming from and like big air quotes around be a good marketer. But at the end of the day, when you're engaging in this work of thought leadership, of visibility, at a certain point, you just have to let the magic do its thing and trust the process. Like you will never know the full impact of your visibility. And that is okay because things don't have to be measurable to be important and worth it and working. Do you agree? I want to know what you think. What is more important to you in this period of your business? Is it reach? Is it resonance? 
There's no wrong answer. I really want to know. So reach out and tell me your thoughts. And that's about it for now. I'll talk with you soon. Okay, so you've heard from us. Now I want to hear from you. Leaving a review helps us so much in growing our reach and supporting more folks with this podcast. And even better, I would love for you to send me a note on LinkedIn with your takeaways from this episode. I cherish and respond to every message, so I can't wait to hear from you. And if you want to go even deeper, check out the show notes to take your next step.